Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. Today we're doing another Bible study, Luke chapter 7. If you'd like me to come speak at your church, or if you have any questions, email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. Luke 7, starting with verse 1. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered unto Capernaum, and a certain centurion servant, who was dear to him, was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent him to the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instead, instantly, saying, He was not worthy for whom he should do this. For he loved our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. So this is just a picture of basically like what, you know, the reverence of a synagogue would look like. Um, there's lots of reverence they found of the um, Jewish synagogues. And according to Wikipedia, it said a synagogue are consecrated spaces used for the purpose of prayer and reading of the entire Hebrew, including the Torah, to study and assembly. However, a synagogue is not necessary for worship. Hanukkah holds a communal Jewish worship that can be carried out wherever the ten Jews assemble. And uh, this is a definition from Britannica. This is what a synagogue in Hebrew called. So the synagogue's traditional focus, its traditional fun functions are reflected in three Hebrew synonyms for synagogue. Bel HaTava, which is the house of prayer. Bel HaKisent, which is the house of assembly. And Bet HaMashuras, which is the house of study. And the term synagogue is of Greek origin, basically meaning to, to bring together. And it means a place of assembly. This is a picture of the um, the third largest synagogue. It's uh, the Great Synagogue of Budapest, Budapest. And you can Google different pictures of synagogues, and they'll show you different Jewish synagogues. Uh, Luke 7, verse 6. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now far from the house, the centurions sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble thy not, not thyself. For I am not worthy that thou shalt enter it unto my roof. Wherefore neither thou myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I am also a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and a say unto one go, and he goes, and unto another come, and he cometh, and then my servant do this, and he, d he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and he turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they were sent, returning to the house, and found the servant who, who, whole that had been sick. And when it came to pass the day after, that he went to the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. And now when he came nigh into the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said unto her, Weep not. You know, a lot of times in the Bible, the Lord says, when he saw somebody, he had compassion. Matthew 9.36 says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad, having a sheep without a shepherd. Mark 10.14 says, And when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and he said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. And um, I'm going to kind of really quickly go off of Luke 7, because children are really important to me. You know, if we teach a child the truth, then they're never going to depart from that. They're going to understand truth from a young age. And unfortunately, um, Satan and his minions have, have been really affecting children. You know, they got books out there that says, I can read about dinosaurs. In the very first page of this book, I can read about prehistoric animals. This is millions of years ago. This is calling Jesus a liar. This is a book called Tiny Dinosaurs. It's a little, little golden book. In the first page, it says, millions of years ago. You know, it really bothers me that these things keep saying millions of years ago. Because there's no fact to that. It's somebody's opinion. It's it's taught in schools everywhere. And the Bible says that um, it was about seven 6,000 years ago that 
God created everything. Even Jesus referenced many times the Bible, the book of Genesis. Here's a book right here. Millions of years ago. Here's a Dr. Seuss book. Not hundreds of years, not thousands of years, but millions of years, long before you were born. You know, evolution teaches people that we started off as this little parasite, this little bacteria, and we got to become to what we have today. And you can see right here, dinosaurs and human, or basically dinosaurs and monkeys and stuff. And it teaches us that humans are related to dinosaurs from 345 million years ago. And I've actually got a whole entire um, group of play playlists called my creation seminars that talks about the, the, you know, the age of the earth, dinosaurs, Big Bang Theory. And it also have um, four covers, the lies in the textbook. Anyways, back to Luke 7, verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said unto her, Weep not. And he came and he touched the briar, and there that bare him stood. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And that he was dead sat up, and began to speak. And he delivered him unto his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, that's a great prophet and resident of among us, and that God has visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him all these things. And John calling unto him two of his disciples, sent unto Jesus, saying, Are thou he that should come, and look, or should we look for another? This is John the Baptist. He's saying, you know, are you the one that should come or should we look for another? And of all the people, John the Baptist should have known that Jesus was the Messiah. In Luke 22, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desires that have to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when they are converted, strengthen thy brother. So back to Luke 7, 19. And John calling two of, his, two of his disciples, they sent to him Jesus, saying, Are thou that he should come, or should we look for another? And this right here is, 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 is an amazing thing when you actually listen to what it says. Verse 20. When the men come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has set, set us to thee, saying, Art he that we should come, or should we look for another? So John the Baptist is in prison, and he sends these two guys to Jesus, and they say, you know, are you the one that should come or should we look for another? And at the same hour he curled many of their infirmities and plagues and evil spirits, and to many things that were blind he gave sight. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How is that the blind see and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the deaf dead are raised to the poor the gospel is preached? So think about this for a second, guys. These two disciples come up, and they, they talk to Jesus, and they can see people getting healed, and the blind gets to see, and the, the people that have leprosy gets to be cleansed, and you know the dead gets to be rosen. And Jesus doesn't say, oh yeah, tell John that's, you know, I'm the Messiah. He says, tell John what you see and what you hear. Tell John what's going on around you. You know, don't, don't tell him stuff that, you know, he wants to hear. Don't say, oh yeah, that's him. Tell him, oh John, this guy, he's he's raising the dead, he's he's letting the blind the, the blind see, the lame walk, leopards are cleansed, the deaf can hear, people are raised, the dead the dead raise. I mean, John, this 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 is the guy. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, they began to speak to the people concerning John. Well, went out thee to the wilderness for for to see. A reed shaking with the wind. But when they went out to sea, a man clothed in a soft raiment, behold, they which are grievously apparelled, they live in delicacy. They are in king's courts. But what ye went out to see, a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, a much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messengers before thee face, they shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among those who are born of women, there is not none greater than that of John the Baptist. 
but he is at least in the kingdom of God, and he is greater than he. And all the people that heard him, all the publicans, justified justify God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I shall like of the men of the generation, and what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace, and are calling to one another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and they have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have yet not yet wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, Behold a gluttonous man, and a winebender, and a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired him that would not eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meat. And behold, a woman of the city, which was a sinner, when he, when she knew that Jesus sat at the meat of the Pharaoh's house, Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with his ointment. So this woman, who was probably a prostitute, she came into Jesus, and she cried on his feet, and she cleansed his feet with her hair, and she put her expensive oil on his feet. She she basically gave he, she gave Jesus everything she had, because of just how much she loved Jesus. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet would have known whom and what manner of woman this is that touches him, for she's a sinner. So this Pharisee is saying, how dare Jesus let this person do this to him, to, to clean his feet with her hair, to cry, to, to dump this ointment, to kiss his feet. How dare him let this girl do this to him? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. When he saith, Master, say it, say, say on. He says, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he whom have forgiven most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seeth now this woman? I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil didst thou not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Whatsoever I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And when they sat and meet with him, begging him to say with themselves, Who is this who forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. You know, in Acts 16.30, it says, He brought them out and said, Sirs, what's, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved in thine house. And they spake in his words that Lord and all that was in his house. So in Acts 16, they're, they're asking, what do I got to do to be saved? And they said, all you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straight way. And when they brought them down to his house, he set meat before them, and he rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. John 1.12 says, But as many of that receive him, to them give the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believeth in his name, which were not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You know, the seed knows how to make the plant, not the dirt. You're basically the dirt. And when Christ comes into your life, there's a seed put inside of you. And that seed begins to grow. And you become mature. And you start to grow in Christ. The dirt doesn't know anything. The dirt's stupid. But the seed is what actually grows. 
John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter his second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water of the Spirit, born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. So Jesus is saying, your first time you're born is through your mother's womb by water, and the second time is by spirit. So the first time you're born is a fleshly birth, the second time your birth is a spiritual birth. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Numbers 21, 8 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it on a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So what was going on back then is these serpents were biting people and killing them. And the people came to Moses, and they said, Moses, these, these serpents are killing us. What should I do? And God told Moses to, to build this little, basically, idol in the woods and tell people that if they get bit by the serpent, to look upon this, and this is going to save them. And later on, you're going to see that Jesus was on a cross, just like the serpent was. And people that look upon Christ and believe in him, they get to be saved. John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son not into the world to condemn the world, but by the, but by the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So Jesus is saying to people, all you got to do is believe. You have to have faith, and that right there saves you. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation is a gift, because he doesn't want anybody to say, I did this to get saved. Christ did everything he can for you. He's the one that saved you. Romans 10.1 Brethren, my heart desire and pray to God for Israel, that is, they that might be saved. For I bear them record that the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about establishing their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves in the righteousness of God, but, the, but Christ in the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believes. That if thou confess thy mouth with the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto them all that call upon him. For so whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Back to Luke 7. And they that had set meat with him began to sit with themselves. Who is that that forgives sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. So guys, that's the Bible study. I appreciate you guys watching it. If you guys have any questions, you can email me. You can comment below. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. You know, how would you feel if you were basically dining with people and somebody came in and started weeping at your feet and crying and wiping your wiping their your feet with their hair? I think that's a pretty amazing thing. And I think Jesus handled that greatly. You know, he said, you know, you didn't you didn't clean my feet. You didn't give me a kiss, which basically means that you care about me. You know, they used to kiss each other on the cheek, showing that they're they're friendly, they're, they're you know they're good friends and everything. And you didn't you didn't anoint my head, but this person anointed my feet with oil. So guys, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.